Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a character of the Sahaba. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah has made iman beloved to you. And He has beautified it in your hearts. He has beautified iman in your hearts. وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمْ And He has made disgusting to you الْكُفْرُ وَالْفُصُوقُ وَالْعِسْيَانِ Disbelief, rejection, corruption, and disobedience to Allah. He has made those disgusting to you. So the true believer is one, when he sees haram, he doesn't say, Astaghfirullah, I really want to do it, but I'm not going to do it. He says, Astaghfirullah, I am sent by Allah to get rid of this. He hates it. He's not tempted anymore. That's when, the, that's when you reached iman. When you're not tempted by evil, you're actually disgusted by it. That's iman. Habbaba ilaykumul iman. Iman has been made beloved, not kufr and fusuq and isyan. That's what, what's been made disgusting to you. And part of the manifestation of these two ayat together, you see iman has been made beloved, and the believers who have iman have been made beloved. Kufr has been made hated, and those who stick on kufr have been made hated also. Notice what happens to you. I'm going to give you a lay example. You're on your way. All of us are on this journey to iman. We don't have perfect iman. But you know, for the men here, and you're all men, I'm not going to say boys or guys, you're men. Before you turned to the deen and you were, have, you were, you were partying in high school or whatever, right? You don't have to tell me, I know. You, maybe you were attracted to some non-Muslim women or you know, the way they dressed in the kafir way, in the fashia way. But when you started turning to Allah's deen, you know what happened? They look ugly. And the sisters that are covered and wearing hijab and you don't see anything, they're the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. You're like, how did that happen? Allah beautifies iman. But they don't see any beauty in it. You say, what do you get to see, man? Right? But we, we see beauty in it. We're mesmerized by it. SubhanAllah, she covers it. I've never even seen her face. I want to marry her. <laughs> Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put that love of iman in you. So that which Allah has made halal, Allah makes them, puts the love of that in you also. This is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are from the character of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu They hated that which was in disobedience to Allah. They loved that which, was, that which was in obedience to Allah. I want to give you one analogy. Sahaba would come to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What was one of the common questions they would ask? How much should we spend? What was another question? What can I do to get the paradise? How many hadiths you find? What can I do to get the paradise? How can I get away from the hellfire? How can I protect myself from the jal? How can I, you know, serve Allah better? Tell me something that will save me. These were the questions. Go on an online forum for young Muslim, you know, students, or go to an ishtihad session. Is chatting halal? Can I eat this? Can I get a mortgage? Can I get... You see a difference in line of questioning? There the questions were, what more can I do for Allah? Now the questions are, what can Allah do for me? What more can He make halal for me? I want to make my life easier. Right? How can I build, make this into paradise? The people, the sahaba were asking, how can I make the next life paradise? There's a difference of a paradise. I would give a talk on, you know, sacrificing, giving in the way of Allah. At the end, I'd get a question, Brother, do I really have to have a beard or is it okay if I shave? Why? <laughs> Even if I answer that question, it's not the matter that, you know, we shouldn't get into a discussion. But the line of questioning represents something in your heart. You don't ask about something you don't care about. You care about these things. This is what your heart is preoccupied with. Our heart needs to be preoccupied with how can I get to the Jannah? What, what more can I do for Allah? What am, I, what, what am I doing for Allah? Is that enough? Have I fulfilled my obligations to Allah? What can I do more for da'wah? What is da'wah? How can I embody what was, said, what was given in the Qur'an as, as role models for da'wah? How can I better my salah? How can I give more in the way of Allah? What to give? How to give? These were the questions that were asked because people were concerned with building the next real estate, not here. They were concerned with the paradise.